Well, hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of a Stonewall's Perspective podcast. I'm your host, Alexander Stone. In today's episode, we have a ve- another very special guest with us. He is a former uh, retired colonel, and he is the host of the Rob Manis Show. Please welcome my friend, Rob Manis. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, sir. How are you, Alex? I am doing well. I am excited to have you on this show and, and kind of talk about some things. But first of all, could you just tell us a little bit about you, who you are and where you come from and, and kind of what you do? Well, uh, I'm a uh, military brat. My dad was in the Air Force for a uh, career over 20 years uh, and uh, grew up in it. Uh, at age 17, I enlisted myself. Uh, I went to college at night school. Uh, got finished with that and got commissioned uh, in the U.S. Air Force and started flying. Uh, my day job as an enlisted person was a bomb disposal, explosive ordnance disposal. A lot of people know the term EOD now. And then I started flying. I flew first in air, aircraft uh, as a jet navigator uh, and then transferred over eventually to the B-1 bomber. I flew as a weapon systems officer and they eventually commanded a uh, B-1 bomber squadron, uh, took them to war. Uh, before that, though, I was a, did a tour in the Pentagon. I was there and working in the National Military Command Center on September 11th. Uh, and uh, as I said, I have to fly and uh, take the uh, squadron to fight the war a couple of times in different roles. And eventually went to Navy War College, uh, and uh, became the vice wing commander. A wing commander is a uh, command position, and so is vice wing commander. So they're, they're usually in charge of the whole base, mm-hmm. all that. So I was vice wing commander in the intelligence world in the Air Force at the Air Force's largest airborne intelligence wing. Uh, that really our, our territory covered from Okinawa uh, around the world uh, to England to the United States. Uh, Nebraska and in Tucson, Arizona, for that matter. Eventually, though, uh, uh, helped restart uh, Air Force's Nuclear Command, Global Strike Command, as a full colonel after my vice wing tour and got selected to be a wing commander out at Albuquerque, New Mexico, at Kirtland Air Force Base. Uh, did that uh, for about a year and a half uh, and then uh, uh, retired in 2011. In came to Louisiana, worked for Intergy Corporation, the only Fortune 500 utility corporation down here in Louisiana. Uh, awesome. Doing safety and technical training as a director, uh, ran training centers in five states, and, uh, ran the uh, uh, the uh, security or the uh, system safety during hurricane recoveries and major disasters and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And then I lost my mind and ran for office, ran for the US <laughs> Senate against Mary Landrieu in 2014. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we did okay. Would have done a lot better had the Republican rhinos uh, gotten behind the real America First candidate in that race. Unfortunately, they elected Bill Cassidy, who just voted it to convict the president on false charges back here in January. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, after that, I ran a couple more times uh, unsuccessfully, uh, once for the U.S. Senate, once for a state rep position. And, uh, uh, and now I'm in the uh, media I have the Rob Manus show on LifeSet TV and at robmanus.com. Uh, we uh, put out uh, one full episode and, and four uh, editorial episodes uh, every week. And uh, we're having a great time. That's awesome. Yeah, so you have a lot of experience with, with uh, military and, and, and even politics as well. And, and so today we're kind of just going to be talking about kind of the history of our country, uh, the Ju- Judeo-Christian values that our country has been founded upon and why we have come to where we are as a nation when it comes to basically every fr- everything from church to uh, society to the military and, and so on and so forth. So there's no doubt about it that, that the founding fathers, they founded this country on Judeo-Christian values. Not all of them proclaimed to be Christian, not all of them were Christian, but they had very set in stone morals. And many of those morals came from the Bible, okay? And it has come to the point in our country where a lot of those morals that our founding fathers once had that we founded, that they founded this country on are no longer 
intact are no longer in many American citizens and in uh, American politicians. So I'm going to ask you, like, why is that? Why, why have we come to that point where, where we don't have those values anymore in our country? Well, a lot of things have happened in the last 240 plus years uh, since the uh, Constitution was ratified. It's been changed uh, more than 25 times uh, through the amendment process, which is, uh, I think everybody is okay with that. Uh, even one of the changes, prohibition of alcohol, uh, was repealed uh, by uh, the ratification process. So uh, that's one of the things that's happened is it has been changed. Uh, uh, but the real, the real systemic shift away from constitutional republic began in the early 1900s with the uh, two things happened there. The income tax was created, the federal income tax, and, uh, and uh, the Senate was changed from uh, uh, appointed senators by the states to uh, senators elected by the people. Uh, so, you know, senators are now like a glorified state representative. You know, state representatives run every two years, so they're always in a in re-election mode, but the senators run every six years, and, and, and uh, they only get about two years before they go into re-election mode, quite frankly. Uh, but they're also not beholden to the state legislatures. You know, if we had the old style of Senate, uh, the Republican Party would control the Senate today uh, because the Republican Party controls uh, more state legislatures. So so that, that was a big change uh, uh, structurally, those two things. Uh, uh, the income tax uh, has resulted in many, 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 many social changes in policy down the road, you know, Social Security, uh, the ability to have a massive standing army instead of a, a relatively small one that could be uh, ginned up uh, to, uh, to scale as necessary. Now we have a massive standing military. We have massive bureaucracies that are not identified in the Constitution. The Department of Homeland Security is the, the latest one. Uh, uh, you know, the, the government of the United States today uh, if our founders saw it, would be appalled, absolutely appalled at what is being allowed to happen uh, and what is being done by not the Congress necessarily or the presidency uh, or the judiciary, but by the unelected bureaucratic fourth branch of government, which has become so powerful that uh, they literally took down a president uh, uh -huh. uh, starting from they tried to stop him from being elected and then they tried to get him out of office twice uh, actually three or four times to, to go beyond the impeachments uh, so so that government is extremely powerful compared to what we were supposed to have mm -hmm. uh, and, and we do see some states pushing back uh, but it's it's very politicized you know from an ideological perspective it's not uh, it's not like Americans are pushing back. It's like Republican states are pushing back uh, yeah. now that Democrats are in charge. And, and all that, you know, in the last time, Democrat states were pushing back. But what we need to be thinking about is, is uh, how do we push back against this massive, all-powerful, unelected branch of government and mm -hmm. restructure it or outright abolish it and reform it as, a, as the constitutional Republican government it's supposed to be, uh, which is our right and is not illegal to do. Uh -huh. uh, it's our right to abolish a government that's not providing the function of protecting our liberty. Uh, it's right in our constitution uh -huh. uh, and to reestablish a government by the people. Uh, to, and I'd like to see that happen too, to reform the current government. Right. I, I definitely agree. And, you know, it's come to the point where many people even don't, don't even know what kind of government we have or, that one that we were supposed to have, which is the constitutional republic. Everyone says, protect our democracy. We have this great, amazing democracy, when in reality, the founding fathers went far out of their way to make sure that America was not a democracy, because when we have a democracy, everything will fail and everything will fall apart. And and it's it's a mess. But everyone seems to think that we have this democracy, when in reality, we don't. We're not founded on democracy. 
Well, that change about the Senate, though, changed that. When, when that constitutional amendment was ratified, that changed that to make us more, less of a Democrat, or less of a representative republic like it was designed originally, and more uh-huh. towards a democracy where the people directly vote uh, for all representatives except for the presidency. And, and in effect, they're trying to make it to where they directly vote for that uh, uh-huh. by taking the uh, electoral college away and doing uh-huh. away with that, which I think is a terrible idea. Yep. Uh, and uh, I would think it was a terrible idea, even if I wasn't a Republican. Yeah, you know, and that's one of the things we need to encourage folks to do is to start thinking less like political party partisanship and more like Americans, because you know what may be hurting the right or conservatives now uh, will just as easily be turned against the left when the right gets back into power. Uh, unless, unless the left and the, and the Democrats are so successful that the right, you know, that the conservatives can never get back into power, the Republican Party can never get back into power. And that's really what's attempting to be done right mm-hmm. now, in my opinion. I definitely agree. It's, it's very dangerous, the path that our country is going towards. And it, it really shows like the depravity of God in many, many, many people in our society, both on both aisles, on, on both conservatives and uh, liberal aisles. Like God is not in our country. He's not being pushed in our country anymore. He's not being um, the base of what our con- country is supposed to be anymore. And, and there's a few quotes from some of the first few presidents that they were talking about the Bible and, and God and everything. George Washington said, it is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. And we've come to the point where people don't care about the Bible. They don't care about God. They don't care about morals or values anymore. They, they only care about what they want and what their desires are. And it's, it falls very short from the Bible. Thomas Jefferson said, the Bible is the cornerstone of Liberty students, uh, per per useful of pursuit of sacred volume will make us better citizens better fathers and better husbands andrew andrew jackson said the book uh that book he's talking about the bible is the rock on which our republic rests ulysses s grant hold fast to the bible to the influence of this book we are indebted for all the progress made in true civilization and to this we must uh look as our guide in the future and people aren't looking to the bible as our guide people aren't looking to god as our guide anymore we're not even looking to morals as our guide anymore we're looking to we're looking at feelings for our morals and and our our guide to where we are leading our society and and that's wrong because when we only think about our feelings uh things like abortion happen and that's evil yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, you know the the abortion issue has been uh, uh, one of the most devastating things for human beings uh, in my lifetime. Uh, even more devastating than what happened in Nazi Germany, really, because you're talking, you know, sixty million babies being killed uh, just since Roe versus Wade. Uh, and I'm not here to say that there's not sometimes a medical reason for uh, for a like to be uh, uh, to be used, uh, I don't think anybody really uh, has that position. But but my position is that look, if it's a healthy pregnancy, healthy baby, uh, then the baby has a right to that life uh, mm-hmm. because the baby is a human being, and it goes all the way back to the Declaration of Independence. Uh, that you know those three things that we highlighted there, life was the first one life liberty and the pursuit of happiness it's our right inherent uh as human beings and uh uh you know if i were uh fighting abortion just you know here in america as an american i'd be fighting it somewhere else uh around the world because it, it's just a uh it, it it's de- devastating it's not enough a strong enough word alex uh, uh-huh. to say where this country uh, has been and continues to go 
Uh, and, and look, folks, you know, uh, do not be deceived. Uh, every time a Republican votes for a continuing resolution, they vote to fund and support abortion every single time. Yep. Uh, do not be deceived. Now, there are a few that vote against those because they're principled. Uh, uh, but uh, every time they do that, and, and it, I don't know if you realize this or not, but every budget that's been passed has been passed on a uh, continu funding uh, stream that's been passed has been passed on continuing resolutions in the last uh, 15 or 20 years. So, uh, so uh -huh. do not be deceived. Uh, we are in a fight, uh, and I use that word intentionally, we are in a fight for uh, the defenseless, little human beings that cannot and have no way of defending themselves from these uh, devastating killings. Yep. And, and, you know, our country used to be like, like you just said, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And when you yeah. commit abortion, when you have an abortion, you are taking away a life and you are taking away liberty from that baby. And you are taking away from that baby the pursuit of happiness as well. And, and people yeah. will say that abortion is in the name of liberty for, for women's rights, you know, and, and for, for healthcare and healthcare is supposed to be for protection, not murder. They're, they're passing this That's off right. as healthcare when in reality, this is not healthcare at, at all. It's, it's taking away a baby. It's taking away a life. And that is so abhorrent. Even if you aren't, uh, a Christian. It should be. It should be abhorrent. Well, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. You know, Muslims are opposed to abortion too. They're, right. they're not. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see the Christian faith and Muslim faith uh, join together in this fight uh -huh. uh, to stop this uh, and, and think as Americans uh, instead of uh, 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 as ideologues uh, or even within their own faith. But, they're, but both faiths uh, uh, Christianity and uh, the Muslim faith uh, have strong anti-abortion uh, principles. Uh, it, so, you know, there's no reason why we as a nation have to continue participating in this bloodbath. And that's really what it is. I, I don't mean to be uh, uh, hyperbolic here. Uh, you know, this, this is uh, uh, it's just a devastating issue for all of us, you know, when you talk about the women that do it, uh, I challenge anyone to really find uh, a woman that seriously is not completely uh, mentally harmed uh, when they have had this procedure for the rest of their lives, and, and, and fathers too. You know, there's it's it's just not a, a a woman's issue; it's a father's issue. We just had Father's Day go by i mean it is devastating i've talked to some of them that uh some that that agreed with the choice and some that disagreed with the choice in my lifetime and it is as devastating for the father to have lost that child as it is for mothers and you know i, I want to address something real quick that the other side likes to throw at us where you guys don't care about about what happens to the babies after they're uh, after they're born and that's just absolutely not true all of the institutions and organizations that I've ever worked with all have uh, care for the mom uh, all the way up to and including uh, a home where they can be safe uh, and they get medical care uh, and those kind of things. And, uh, and then for the children afterwards, you know, we have a, we have a foster child system in this country. We have adoption systems in this country. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and what we need to address is to make it easier for adoptions uh in this country instead of uh making it so hard and expensive uh, so that families that because there are literally millions of families that can't have children that want children uh that uh, all working together uh we can resolve that issue of what happens after mom child and the father after uh, the birth uh, uh, heavily involved in that in social policy instead of establishing social policies that do things like destroy families uh, like what's happened to the black American family over the last four decades, five decades, mm -hmm. uh, the working, you know, the poor, uh, poor in this country, not just, the, it doesn't matter what color or background or ethnic background they are, uh, their families are subject to the same policies that 
we all, talk, you know, a lot of us talk about that it's destroyed the African American family. So it's it's not just about African Americans. It's about policies that are destroying our families. Uh, and we all know that kids that don't have two parent families have a lot less likelihood of getting out of poverty, a lot more likelihood of living in poverty and of becoming criminals and and being career criminals and lifelong face lifelong incarceration. So, mm-hmm. you know, to continue with policies like the Democrats have insisted on doing uh, 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 without making some radical changes to those policies so that they are supporting these families uh, uh, is uh, the wrong way to go too. And if, if we get this, get the opportunity to get this abortion issue uh, uh, fixed, then we also have to address those policies too. Mm-hmm. You know, something I'd like that, to see those that, policies addressed beforehand, honestly, mm-hmm. right now, but it's hard uh, to get folks to. I, yeah, I definitely agree. I think something that we also need to address and you, and you just talk about this, but, but fathers, um, there, there's a very real problem in our society and it's because of fatherlessness. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why we are where we are today as, as a country, because, fathers are not in the homes anymore and that's that's something that that isn't good and and even for the fathers that are in the home anymore many of them are 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 sinful and immoral and living ungodly lives and fathers they pass on a legacy to their family one that is either godly and and full of morals or one that is uh, of sin and idolatry it's one of the other of the other one or the other and when there is not a father in the home that that one that is godly and the the legacy that is godly the percentage of that probably goes way way down and that's a that's a very scary thing to think about yeah yeah it is uh it's uh it's mind-boggling actually uh i mean i mean even if you take faith out of it uh uh, I'd rather see children in a two-parent home, a mom and a dad, uh, than anything else, uh, and and have social policy. If we're going to have social policy, policy uh, back that up, uh, yep. and uh, instead of destroy it, because we actually have policies that have destroyed it. Uh, and uh, as as you know, just like you, I'm a Christian. I, I would like to see uh, uh, people of faith being parents and. Uh, uh, you know, I always want to strive to be a better uh, uh, person in my religious life. Uh, uh, no, none of us are perfect, uh, right. but you know, your children see you trying or not trying, and that has a that has a big impact on them. Uh, even if you never even have a conversation uh, directly with them, uh, if they see you trying uh, and, and trying to live your faith uh, the way you profess to be, instead of ignoring it uh, that is a huge deal maker in a successful uh childhood uh, and a child becoming an adult that's a productive member of society that has equality of opportunity and the ability to pursue uh, life liberty and the pursuit of happiness right you know one of the things that is going on in in today's generation is the whole black lives matter thing and and, and what they want and on their website, they, they used to have this on their website, uh, but they don't anymore because they got, they were losing money for it. But, but what they said on their website probably remains true to how they believe. And they were basically saying that they are uh, in this to disrupt the nuclear family. And so that's, that's a father and a mother in the home. When you don't have a nuclear family, uh, the chances of that of the family uh, succeeding is, goes goes down a lot. It says we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure required by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. They don't mention fathers. They take fathers out of that because they don't want fathers in the home. They don't care about fathers anymore. Yeah. And that is not a good thing. And, and people are blindly supporting this movement when in reality, this movement is detrimental to the nuclear family, the, the, the biblical family, the 
or, or as they call it, the Western prescribed nuclear family, which when you get rid of that, that everything goes downhill from 